Hello and welcome back to Table Talk 24. Welcome back here to the show floor here at UKGE. I'm with Roberto from Ares Gains and we've obviously got quite a big stall behind us and some lovely bits here. So what have we got uh, going on in the show this weekend? Oh, okay. We have several new releases here at the show which made quite an impression apparently on the public. The tables were always uh, very active and uh, I think we have sold out with almost everything that we had, so that's pretty good. So we have, especially we have three games which we are releasing here at the show, so for, for the very first time they've been flew in from the factory and releasing here. Plus, of course, we are continuing to promote and present our classic lines, Sword and Sorcery, War of the Ring, Wings of Glory, Quartermaster General, so we are continuing to present and to introduce these games to new players. So it's been a, very, a couple of very busy days for us. Uh, yeah. Brilliant, yeah. So uh, how have you found it today particularly? Because obviously we're on the Saturday now, um, yeah. I think everybody's found it a bit busy, but how, how have you found it here? Yeah, it's been great, I must say. I think that say, I was a little bit worried because, you know, train strike and things, will people find a way to, to get here? But it's been amazing. There is a very uh, it's a great audience. Uh, people were really enthusiastic about the games. So, so I think this show is growing really well and we're very happy to be here as okay. exhibitors. Okay. So what's the first game wanna, we want to show people? So, so first thing, okay, let's go top bottom. Okay, here we see two of the releases which were just flew in from, uh, from the factory to, to the show. Kangaseiros, it's a, a very thematic game on a subject which may be not very famous outside of Brazil, but if you want it in a nutshell, it's Brazilian Wild West in a way, because in the Brazilian Northeast, in fact, uh, there was this age around the end of the 19th century, early 20th century, where these uh, uh, bandit gangs, the, the, the Kangaseros, which depending on the side of the story you hear, were sort of Robin Hood style heroes, or they were just bandits. Uh, anyway, you, in the game you are running a gang of Kangaseros, and you're trying to survive, because of course there will be police and uh, headhunters which are chasing you at the same time trying to get rich, to get famous, to get prestige from the uh, what your gang can achieve. So it's uh, very strongly from a thematical perspective, very nicely designed uh, Euro mechanics uh, with a card driven game system uh, which uh, is really interesting, a little bit of a deck building element, so very, very original. Perfect. And we've got uh, the rich and the good. The rich and the good is uh, uh, the return of a game which uh, was originally released by Winnie Moves. Uh, with the German title was Habungut. We decided to keep it as a subtitle because the game has quite a name recognition. It, it never released it to the English market uh, until now, and so we are very happy to bring it back. Uh, it's a uh, very peculiar economic game because it's not just about getting rich as the name suggests you have to balance out the uh, social presence that you achieve in the game through what you do for charities so it's reflecting this kind of 19th century ethic which maybe is a little bit lost now let's say where well, essentially you have to give back to society uh, if you want to be seen as a successful businessman and so in, in practice this turns uh, into this mechanic where at the end of the game you get eliminated if you are the one who gave out less money to charities and among the other players the richest one is the winning player plus there is a very nice uh, uh, mechanic which creates a lot of interesting information uh, say say partial information and interaction between players because every player will have a shared card holder uh, with the neighbors so you always see a part of the cards which are in play but uh, and you will draft from these two card holders so interacting with your neighbors uh, on the way you manipulate the market so it's a pretty clever mechanic uh, which uh, Carlo Rossi designed and used uh, in two different games, one that we released in past, uh, Divinity Derby, and this one, uh, which creates a lot of interesting interaction between the players. Then we have two games uh, here which are more 
war games in the traditional modern war games in the traditional sense uh, from our partner company Nuts Publishing that we represent uh, to the English language market. Uh, we are coming in Ive is a, is a modern day uh, game based on the fight uh, against uh, the ISIS and Saigon 75 is set uh, in, uh, in the Vietnam War. Yeah. Uh, okay, going down, you see a lot of painted sword and sorcery figures. Sword and sorcery has uh, been very popular for us. We are launching next month, we are launching a new crowdfunding campaign to complete the cycle with a new release which is called Abyssal Legends, which will be a very big uh, set featuring a huge monster, a cool like creature that you see down there. And so, so here we are continuing, we brought the entire Zord and Sorcery range and continue to promote it. Ensemble is the winner, another new release here, and also the winner of the best party game award by the judges here at UK Game Expo. Ensemble is a really clever twist on uh, uh, a visual game system where you try to find connection between cars, so a little bit in the Dixit tradition, so to say but with a couple of twists, I say in a nutshell, it's a little bit Dixit meets the mind, okay. you know, <laughs> okay? So that's, uh, there is this cooperative element and there is this increasing level of uh, challenges that you have to achieve. And unlike Dixit, you have to play cooperatively to try to figure out what the other players are thinking so that okay, you can all uh, make connections between cars uh, in, a, in the same way. So it's uh, very clever, very beautiful, uh, illustrated. So it's a little bit outside of our style. You know, mm -hmm. we are mostly known for uh, war games, historical based war ga games, but we are very happy to have it in our catalog and we think it can be really nice. Then, War of the Ring, the card game. This has been definitely the most popular release for us in the last uh, few months. Uh, of course, it builds up on the success of our long selling but, um, much appreciated line uh, War of the Ring uh, board game. Uh, for War of the Ring, the card game, here at the show we are previewing the solo and co-op expansion against the shadow. So the game, uh, the card game itself uh, has been designed to be played with four players. You can play instead as two players playing as teams, uh, as uh, every player controlling both uh, uh, parts of, this, of the three people so bo and uh, both uh, teams uh, in, the, in the shadow side. With the solo and co-op expansion, you can play solo or two player as the three people against the shadow which are uh, controlled by uh, an automatic system, shadow bots essentially. Uh, to streamline the gameplay of the shadow bots, uh, we have uh, a completely new card deck created for the for the shadow cards. So you, essentially, you replace the shadow cards with the new cards, uh, and you have a very simple algorithm that uh, guides you through the choices for the shadow bots. So it's something that, uh, after a couple of turns of play, you know what the priorities are, and you really don't really need to look at it again. To give so, you a different aspect on what you've already traditionally played. Yeah, yeah, from, uh, it's, uh, the, the, it's very interesting that from the free people's player perspective, you are playing exactly like you are playing when you are playing against the human opponents, uh, but say replacing the shadow with the bots uh, and the bots have a unique strategy, a unique uh, wow. say weaknesses and strengths, uh, I think it makes for a very interesting uh, uh, version of the game. And of course the advantage is that you can play solo or instead of playing two players with the existing two player modes you have a new way to play two players in a cooperative mode which is also very Brilliant. interesting Fantastic. and this will uh, here at the show we are getting people to play to test it if they want instead of playing the regular version they can test the solo and co-op variant and we just launched the pre-orders and will release in september Lovely, lovely. So that's all obviously coming up on in the future. So that's fantastic. Uh, I know, um, obviously, we've seen some of the games that have been playing, and I know people have been enjoying that. But yeah. Roberto, thank you for your time today. Thank you, thank you for If you haven't already, check out the other videos from the convention, and we will catch you next time. Thank you.